The weekend is here and rest is near. Welcome on the show Friday, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Now, um, too many things we have to discuss, but first of all, um, the Super Falcons, don't forget, took a two-goal lead over Ghana's Black Stars in their Women's African Cup of Nations. Qualifying fixture, thanks to a brace from Sweden-based forward Uchena at the Mobolaji Johnson Arena. That was on Wednesday. The visitors had come close in the minute when Grace Anima saw a fierce shot inside the box blocked um, by Onama Ebi for a corner. Now, I've got Susan Omokpeloi via Zoom on the show today. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Wally, and thanks for having me always. Thank you. Um, you are, apart from being a female, you are also a, an ardent follower of the Super Falcons. And um, so, um, how would you rate them technically in that match against Ghana? Were they very good or Ghana wasn't good enough? Um, on a scale of um, 1 to 10, I think I want to rate them a 6. Um, they were not technically technically sound like we should be seeing a nine-time champion. Uh, the first half, that's the Super Falcons played the first half, and it was all about Ghana in the second half. They did everything, only that they couldn't get penetration to um, Felani get in their goal. So um, based on their tech, they they should be playing better. I mean, um, for all the Super Falcons, is what everything in Africa wants to play the Super Falcons and win. So if um, that is our best, then I think we should be worried. If that's the best, the Super Falcons of technical abilities, then I think we should be worried. But um, the good thing is we were able to get the needed results that would take us to the second leg. So. So I say your question, in terms of technical output or ability of the team, I think um, we didn't really do well. It's maybe not um, um, on the lucky side to find the back of the net because they threw in everything in uh, the second half. They were better than the Super Falcons, to put it that way, in the second half. Okay, now later on the show, we're going to be having Shewa Judagba via call. Um, but before I go to my next discussion, Susan, um, how far do you think our girls will go? The only major stumbling block we have in Africa is always the Bayana Bayana. Yeah, fortunately, we are not meeting them in our uh, next uh, leg. If we scale through the order of the Ghanaians, our next opponent will definitely be Côte d'Ivoire because Côte d'Ivoire um, played against Nijé on... Uh, um, qualification and then again nine goes to nothing so that puts them in a very good position to qualify for the okay susan stay with us i've got shewa jidagba on the phone with me shewa good morning yeah good morning Wally. i've got susan i'm up you side by side with you she's on she's on zoom via zoom and i'm looking at the nigeria football federation now they have reinstated salisu yusuf as the assistant coach of the Super Eagles. Now, recall that Yusuf was found guilty collecting bribe after he was caught on camera collecting 357,000 naira from journalists posing as football agents who wanted him to select players for the 2018 African Championship. The act was shown in the highlighted corruption in Ghanaian football by the BBCI. However, in a press statement, NFX spokesperson Adimola Olajiri said on Thursday, Yusuf is expected to be his position with effect from 1st November 2021. Um, Shane, let me start with you on this one. This is a man that was caught on camera. He planned to fix a match um, um, selection. He got 357,000 from journalists who claim to be agents, football agents. And this man is back. Isn't, shouldn't his integrity be at stake at this point? Should a man like this be brought back to the Super Eagles? Well, I know in life, they say to hear is human, to hear is uh, human and to forgive is divine. But the honest truth is, the Nigerian Football Federation sometimes just take you for a ride. Also, Tanish Yusuf, for all the technical know how he's got, as far as football is concerned was caught on camera, um, you know, collecting bribes and all of that. I would have thought that the proper thing should have been done. Even if they are going to restate someone, don't restate that person just like they are jumping into the chest of people that if you like, accept, if you like, don't accept, that's all, get lost. 
que je l'appuie le cœur par cette conférence. Ce qui est l'ordre rationnel pour lui, c'est fini. That's why, secondly, if he's coming as an assistant coach, I used to know a certain Joseph Koyobo, from a captain of the Super League, who was installed as an assistant coach, despite not having any UFA A or B license. And I was asking a simple question. When the Obed Ibus went to Mexico, they were taken by Prola Idogu because of the city that don't do not get his uh, ticket and uh, visa. Now they are going for another tournament. They are prepared by the technical person in the NFL, in person of Ogosi Ezago. And we are asking the question that, what is the job of Joseph Yoko? Is it to arrange school in training or be a motivational speaker to the boys in the dressing room? On the issue of service issues, I honestly say I'm disappointed in the Nigerian Football Federation because even if you are going to do something like that, you don't just do things like this. It is totally wrong, it's shameful, it's disgusting, and it's unexplainable. In the same time, things like this will not happen. We all saw what happened to Samala right now, and you, you, you can see how it all turned out. He was never given a reprieve, he was never given a waiver. So why are you doing this to, to Salis Susan? Susan, let me come to you on this one. Now, we know for one that Salisu knows the Nigerian League and Nigerian Football League players like his back of his hand. Are we saying that we cannot yes. find somebody else to actually get players from the league for us? Only Salisu is the one that we have. A man who was disgraced, was banned from football activities. He's been brought back to be the assistant coach and head coach of Chan. I don't know. Well, well it's disappointing to say the least. And um, you remember three years ago when this um, deal was done, We've always talked about it and we've always asked questions of the NFF um, to tell us what the position of Sally Suizu is. And they've always been around the bush. They will never go straight to tell you this is the position of the NFF on Sally Suizu. You know, they never told us he was sacked. All NFF communication department has been telling us is that he was suspended. You know, at the point they even appointed him, they attached him from the NFF, they attached him to Rangers. At some point, so it is disappointing, like like she has, been, has said, and uh, I think we have coaches that can do better than Salis to use. So yes, I remember that we had um, Coach Mama at some point, and yes, maybe he did not really perform. Obviously, he, he didn't really get the results we wanted. But Yusuf cannot be the only coach, home and abroad, that will be able to handle that position. And like I said. Yobo, when he was appointed, yes, eyebrows were raised because Genetra himself questioned his abilities. So if you know you want to put in um, Yobo as the assistant, let us know this is the case. Because when NFF was asked that was the position of Yobo, they told us he's the second assistant coach. I don't know how, how the NFF does these things and they think they can get away with it. Nobody's going to question us. We rule um, the NFL, we rule football, we run it the way we like. I mean, you don't do that. You should be you should be answerable to the people who you are giving results to. So that it's really disappointing to see him come back. If I thought, if I thought while he's going to be brought back, he should have given given him a lower position so he knows the gravity or the consequences of his action. He does not bring him back and put him in that same position. Who does that? You don't do that say, even in Senate client. The Esalisu Yusuf himself will resign, will resign from that position for integrity and reputation's sake. Now, Shio, um, we know how, how well Salisu knows the Nigerian League and the players. Does this mean that Genoro is planning to actually intend to bring in more home-based players into the Super Eagles? I don't think so. Because for me, the issue around the Salisu it's just a case of Joseph Yoko has um, um, Joseph Yoko's case is a foregone conclusion. And Kenneth Walk can now have that opportunity to continue to run away from the home based players because he knows Salish Yusuf knows the home based players better, even than a Joseph Yoko. And don't forget, they have taken us to chance before in Monaco where we finished second. So you understand the league very well. 
Okay, now Susan, um, let me come to yeah. you on this one. Um, we all know for one that Amadou Penick's attitude to we journalists and the public is that I will do what I want, I don't care what you guys think, is what I want, I will do. And the NFF, by, by through Amadou's behavior, is beginning to do that too. And that's why they feel that nobody should be consulted before you put anybody as the assistant coach, as the head coach. Mm -hmm. We just sit down in our office over drinks and take anybody we want. Yobo was put there. Yobo has no idea mm -hmm. how many players are in our league. He has never gone to go and watch any league before. You put him mm -hmm. as a stand coach. Now, Sadisu is the perfect man for the job, except for his integrity that is at stake at this point. Well, I don't agree Salis is the perfect man for the job. Yes, his um, statistics with the national team speaks for him. But well, we've, got, we've got better coaches coaching in the NPFL that knows the NPFL players like the back of their hands. I'll mention names. Abdul Makaba is a very good coach, very intelligent coach. He can come in as the assistant coach. We've, we've got a lot of them like that that you can mention um, that can come in as assistant coach. Salisu is not the best we've got. If you don't give others opportunity, you can know their abilities. We'll keep mentioning them. We have um, Ogumbote as well. He also knows the players in the NPFL like the back of his hands. We have Ogumbote, we have Abdul Maikaba. Why not try out those big names in the league? And let's see how they perform. You can't keep pushing Salisu to us like he's the only one we've got, like he's the only solution to the problem of, of um, bringing in players from the NPFL. No, you don't do that. We have, we have coaches in the league that, that are in that range or in that class, I don't want to use the word better than Salisu, so, that are in that range, that have got that experience, that knows the players from the NPFL like the back of their hands. We've got them. So why not try them out and know their capacity and, and give them an opportunity to also give something back to football? I don't Shem, think Salisu is, is, is the only player, is the only coach we've got. Shem, we have come back to this man-no-man -man thing in Nigerian sports again, where the devil I know is better than the angel I don't know. Because Salisu is their man and they know Salisu, not caring what he has done in the past, not caring his integrity, they've brought him back again. Now we, we, you know? And that thing is killing us in every sphere in Nigeria. It's a, it's a sad development that we can understand with you. We don't care about what we have done in the past. What we care about is the present. And that's what I'm asking for. You know, it will learn it to tell you. It's, it's very shameful. Okay, um, Shane was shaking there. Um, let me come to um, Susan. Susan, I want to thank you very much. For joining us on the show this morning, thank you very much. For your thank you very much, Ali Thank you. I hope I still got you okay. He was breaking out at the point. But the yellow-green Nigeria's men's cricket team extended their lead to two after three matches at the ongoing bilateral T20 series against Sierra Leone at the University of Lagos on Thursday. The host grossed 124 runs in the inning of the third game and ran the visiting team at 53 and all out. In the post-match interview, Captain Joshua Ayaneke said they, through their bowling prowess, that they still had more to do in the batting department. Sylvester Okwe won the Man of the Match award for the second game award. He also won in the first game when Nigeria had a first win. The six-match T20 bilateral series supported by Axis Bank, Ardover Crystal Insurance, Notter, Glee Hotels and Spa and Pets. The fourth game of the series is scheduled for Saturday, October, while the fifth game is planned for Sunday, 24th. The game will be rounded off with the sixth and last match. She, um, the coach of the cricket national team, Nigeria Cricket National, has confirmed that, listen, our bowling is fantastic. We only have problems that are batting now. She, can you hear me? I can hear you very well, Wally. Now, he says is our... It, is it... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the coach of the national team... Uh, Desha Bandula, Sanka, Pradit Guru Senior yeah. said our batting is our problem, which I completely agree. Uh, the Nigerian team has not posted 130 runs. In our first game, which was even on Tuesday, we played 99 runs. And the Sierra Leoneans won by six wickets. Surprisingly, to the shock of, uh, and dismay of most cricket lovers. Uh, we rallied back on Wednesday to win by seven runs. In a frenetic finish, Nigeria batted and posted 102 runs. But yesterday, they improved on their batting and they scored 134 runs. 
was decimated, dismantled, and showed their supremacy over Syria alone, beating them by 71 runs. And you made mention of Sylvester Okwe. Sylvester Okwe is the younger brother of Isaac Okwe, and is one of the victorious uh, players in the history of Nigeria because he was the captain of the historic under 19 team that went to the World Cup in South Africa. So they were pitted against uh, Australia, West Indies, and uh, England, who are former champions of under 19 World Cup. But take nothing away from the young man, he's a fantastic player. Uh, he's one man of the match, a uh, player of the match uh, award twice. He won it the previous day and he won it yesterday. And he won a plaque plus $100, uh, courtesy of the Edo State Cricket Association. The first one was won by the Shiranonian player. His name is Muniru Paka. He came out to say Nigeria will lose all the remaining six. But I think that got to the Nigerians and they are leaving to one. Today is rest day, and action resumes again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now, Sherwin, before we go to our, our, my next story, um, the good thing is um, cricket in Nigeria under Uyi Apata has been improving daily. However, I also am happy about the fact that um, the TBS will have less stress on it now since the um, cricket oval in Unilag has been fixed. I tell you what, Mr. Uyo Sandu Kawadu Apata, who is the President of the Nigerian Care Federation and the Chairman of Edo State Cricket Association has done tremendously well. The Unilag Cricket Over, I tell you, was done by the Unilag Cricket Alumni, which um, we are further headed the supervision of that construction. And they did it in honor of their former coach and team manager, Professor Adebola Kukoi, who was a retired professor of uh, comparative uh, history. He was the one who supervised the construction of that pitch in 1966. And I, I must say that um, it's fantastic from the Unilag Cricket alumni. He's one of the best in Nigeria now. I mean that Unilag Cricket over. And he's fitting to know that he's hosting an international event. Mm. Okay, moving forward now. Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta said things need to change to combat the abuse managers receive following the sacking of Steve Bruce by United Newcastle United on Wednesday. Now, Bruce was relieved of his duties following the recent takeover at the club, and the 60-year-old released a statement suggesting he may retire as a result of the level of abuse he's received. Arteta says the managers should have to accept the current and express his sadness at seeing the way managers, as much as um, experienced as Bruce, have been treated. What? Now, Sheung Arteta says that he doesn't like the way Steve Bruce was treated by Newcastle, just sacked like that. But what did they expect? It's a new management, it's a new owner. Things will change, people will be sacked. We knew we were going to be sacked. But I think what uh, Arteta was complaining about was what Steve Bruce said. That not only was he sacked, but the way the fans were holding insult at his wife and his family was what he did not like. And he goes on with eight million pounds. But he insult my family and give me eight million pounds. I don't care. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's look at um. Well, I'm not a big fan of he, him. I don't know about you. Um, Andy Murray. Now, number two seed Diego ousted Andy Murray to reach the quarterfinals of the European. Um, Cup now Antwerp that is while Lloyd Harris and Martin Fuscofex also won their matches setting up a clash into the next round. Murray who came on as a, gave the 29 year old a battle and forced the third set. Now Sean before I let you go um, in this um, many tournaments we've seen Indian Wells now Antwerp going on we're not seeing the usual suspects the Nadals the Djokovic the Federal the Murrays we're hearing new names Sissipas Zverev. Now, Schwartzman, I think it's good for tennis. Definitely good for tennis, but take nothing away from Andy Murray. Uh, former world number one, one three Grand Slam, one two Olympic titles, but the hip injury he had uh, was a big conundrum in his career. But I hope he comes back better. But like I always, I've always said, once the trial of Novak Djokovic, uh, Rudy Federer, and of course, Rafa Nadal retires, we might not have any dominance anymore. We we'll have people, you know, always at some point in time, meaning there and there. 
Okay, Shea Wanjita, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Mm. Now, the New York Knicks, that's in the NBA, got their NBA season off to a winning start, outclassing the Boston Celtics in double overtime to win 138 to 134. Despite the Knicks leading by four points with nine seconds remaining, a frantic end to the regulation time saw the game forced in overtime and later double overtime, where the Knicks eventually won out. Julius Randle and Evan Fournier both registered 30-plus points for the Knicks, 35 and 32, while Jaden Brown broke Celtics' record four points scored on opening day with 46. Next stop for the Knicks is a trip west to face the Orlando Magic, while the Boston Celtics host the Toronto Raptors. Fournier in fantastic form there. Now, if you ask me, in the sport, this must be one of the greatest rivalries ever. Now, Formula One title rivals Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen have been close on track all season, at times too close, but otherwise they are keeping their distance. Mercedes seven times world champion Hamilton, six points behind Red Bull's Verstappen after 16 or 22 races, had little to say when asked at the US Grand Prix how the relationship had changed as the title fight intensifies. Verstappen has won seven races to Hamilton's five this year, but Austin has been much more of Mercedes track than Red Bull in recent years. Hamilton has won five of the eight races held in Austin and Mercedes have been on pole for the last six at the circuit of the Americas. This year could be a hot lot closer. However, an Hamilton winner of a record 100 career races recognized the next one in Mexico could also be tough. Asked how important it was to win in Austin, Hamilton said it was important to win every race. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much, Shimaji Dagba. Thank you very much, Susan Amokbaloye. Join us same time on Monday, same station on Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you, at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.